Welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. And for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel, I do planner and planner related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of when I load a new video. And if you could also comment to this video, like this video and share it to your favorite platform that does help my channel grow and would be truly appreciated. So for today's craft series 2019, we are going to make these cute little booklets here. And uh, these are three that I made the other night that I am completely enamored of. And I think this would be great, um, a little notebook. I think this would be a great little brag book, a little picture book. Um, I think if you had a few in the same style, this would be great for a December daily, October daily, November daily, gratitude log, whatever. So um, I'll show you how it's put together and then I'll give you some ideas on what you can use these for and also because of the size if you have a clutch wallet like I do it fits perfectly on the inside and so you can have something on the go all right so let's get started with the tutorial so this is actually very easily put together and it's just made by using some six by six inch scrapbook paper. Now I would definitely recommend a one sided paper and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Now these two my mom picked up for me last year. I believe this yeah, this was in the Target dollar spot and she picked it up uh, around fall of last year. And I think these are really pretty. So we might use this. This is a double-sided and I really like the paper. It's in a pirate way, um, but I'll tell you why I wouldn't recommend this for this project. And I don't know if this is double-sided or not. No, it's just single-sided. Now this paper here Actually, all of them are rather thick, and I kind of like that. So, while I like this paper, I think we're going to do the fall. So, what you're going to need for this project... Oh, well, so the reason why I would not recommend a two-sided paper for this particular project, I will actually have another 6x6 project coming in the next few weeks, is you're going to be gluing it together and unless there's paper in here that you absolutely hate, um, you're going to be wasting <laughs> one of your sides and I don't want to have to choose because uh, there isn't anything in here that I don't really like. So that's why I wouldn't recommend it. If that's what you have, then absolutely go ahead. But there's two sides that's gonna be glued together. So I think just a single sided sheet of paper just works perfectly. So there are six designs here and there's four designs here, if the cover is any indication. And what we're gonna need for this booklet is six pieces. We'll need seven pieces. So let me just pull one out of each of these. And like I said, this is rather thick, which I like. I like the way that it'll end up at the end. So that's four, five, and six. Now all of the measurements and the whatnot will be in my corresponding blog post. And then out of this one, I think we'll pick our cover. And I kind of like this one. Now this one is not as thick as these, but for the purpose that I'm gonna use it for, that's not a problem. And actually, I'll need one more for the spine. And I, I think I want this red. Now this is actually gonna be a really easy project. 
So what you want to do is you want to pick your cover. This will be the spine. We'll only need a small piece of this. And then this you want to situate in the way that you want your papers to be in your book. So I think I might want something heavily patterned, then something not as heavily patterned, and go from there. I think, I think that works. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I think I have too many. So I'll take this one out so that there are no duplicates. Although it doesn't matter. You could actually do this entire project with the same paper. But what I want you to do next is, you could use a scoring tool, but I'm just going to fold these in half. Again, I want to make this as easy as possible. You do want to get a good crease. Now if you have a bone folder you can use that. I'm just using the silver part of a pen <laughs> that I have handy. And if your paper is directional you will want to keep track of that. So for most of this I don't think it's going to matter but for this apple one it definitely will. And so just go ahead and fold all of your paper in half because it is a six by six that will give you a three by six book. And I think I want it this way. And that like that. And this like this. All right, so we've got all of our pages, and again, we want to, I mean, it's not the end of the world if they don't stay in order, but I do want them in a particular way. All right, and it's just as easy as this. So you take your glue, whatever glue you have. Now, of course, you could use score tape, but if you are assembly line doing this, then um, that could get expensive. I think the glue works just as well. If it works, there you go. You don't want it too thick, but you do want to put on all of the edges and then just a little in the middle. And then you want to sandwich your pages together. Now because you are using wet glue, it does give you a little bit of time to move it around. And then you just kind of want to buff it in. And so that is the first two pages of our book so far. And I'm just going to continue with this until I've got all of the pages glued. Now I find if you kind of sandwich them together and the glue is going to dry, at least this one, is going to dry relatively quick. So you want to get it in place as quickly as you can, but you do still have a little bit of time to move it around. If you were using score tape, which again is perfectly fine, you would, it basically is a one and done. So um, you, that's a little less forgiving. The glue, definitely more forgiving. And I really like this craft bond one. Um, it sticks rather well. It doesn't warp the paper too much. And I couldn't tell you how much it was. I, I can't remember when I bought it, so. Um, I don't know how much the price was, but I don't think it was very expensive. You could use Elmer's glue as well. Again, if you're doing this with kids for a class project or for a family project, or if you're making this for craft fairs, you do want to make it as economical as you can. This isn't an heirloom item. This isn't something that your kids are gonna <laughs> hand down for the generations. So it doesn't matter that you know what your glue is just 
whatever glue you have. Although I don't know that Elmer's glue is, is, is as fast drying as something like this. So we've got our last piece. And it just seems more awkward because I'm doing it for camera. But just wanna line that up. Now, as you notice, you can see that there. I mean, it's, it's not horrible, but it's not great. And then our front and our back is naked. So that's why we wanted to pick the cover. And so there is a little bit of cutting involved. So this one, I'm gonna cut down right in the middle so that I have two uh, three by three or three by six sheets. Now you can measure and cut. I am not great at cutting a straight line. So I'm going to cut this one just right at three inches. And then this one, I'm going to cut at one inch. I didn't write down the measurements when I did those other ones, but I think a one inch spine is perfect. You will have a little bit left over, but that's fine. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to first put the front and back cover down. Now you could leave it as white and maybe put some ephemera or a journal card or something here. Um, but I just, I mean, I have tons of this little six by six paper. I don't know why I don't actually use it. It's not a really good size for anything else I use. So I'm glad um, I came across this and I probably saw this or a composite of this on YouTube. I couldn't tell you by who. I watch tons of videos but I like how easy and quick this comes together. And so we'll do our front and our back. And you really want to take care with the edges and the corners. Again, this isn't going to last forever, but I mean, you, you do want it to be as nice as you can make it. And so just line that up and press that in. Now for this one, what I'd recommend is kind of molding it. You don't want to score it, but you do want to sort of uh, give it an idea that it's going to be bent over <laughs> as a spine, and then that way it's a little bit easier to put down. Now this one, if you have score tape, you may want to just use that because it's an instant bond, but I didn't use it in the other books, so we won't use it here. And so, what I want to do is, I want to make sure I know what's my cover, and I'll know that with the direction of the apples. So this is my cover, because again, it looks exactly the same, so if I flipped it over, I wouldn't know until I got to that. So if you didn't have anything directional in here, then it wouldn't matter what your cover was. But because I know this is the cover, I want to make sure that this edge is as straight as I can make it. And I like the contrast. It does make it look like a little composition notebook. And this one, because we are using the glue, it will take a little bit of time so just go ahead and buff that in. And then for the back side, what I want you to do is I want you to run just a really thin bead of glue there. And then I want you to put some glue on the flap. Again, paying more attention to the outer edge and the corners. Now when you do this, I would definitely recommend to take a little bit more time because it actually would be better if you let the glue set between. But I, I just wanted to show you how this is. Now what I'm doing is I'm molding the paper to that and then I'm going to mold it and bring it over to that. And again, if you used score tape, then it would be an instant bond. Now this glue will set, but you do need to be a little bit patient with that. And if you mold it around the, the booklet there, then you can get a really good and tight seal. This will hold the book together 
although with just the glue it would do that already but it also covers up those raw edges and just makes it a little bit more finished Now while I'm waiting for this one to dry, because essentially your book is done, and that was really quick, it's really cute, there is still wet glue, that's why the pages are sticking together, but once it dries you can just kind of buff that out. But while this one is drying, I'm going to place it underneath something heavy and move that to the side. But let me show you how we can turn this into something really decorative and functional. All right, so if you are just found me on YouTube just randomly, then you may not know, but I am Team Happy Planner. So I have tons of Happy Planner stickers. So uh, for this front cover, I think I'm going to put a cute quote. Now, although this is more of a farm theme, um, it is pulling kind of Thanksgiving-y to me. Alrighty, so I think I'm going to make this really simple because I, I like the, the barn and the, the, the huge chickens. I mean, they're huge compared to the barn. <laughs> so I'm going to make this really simple. I'm sorry for all the noise. I, there's nothing I can do about that. And... Let's make this a reminder book. And so we'll put this right in here. So this is our remember book. Now this is absolutely optional, but if you're looking at this and thinking, well, okay, so now what? Well, this is one way that you can absolutely use your stickers if you have them don't go out and buy them just for this but you can make this very functional now if you're making this for a craft fair then i would leave that to your customer um, because if you're making lots and lots of these then you're going to use all your stickers but if you're making this for yourself or if you're making this um, and you have someone in mind and you know their style then you certainly can use that but again I, I just wanted to give you some ideas now I believe if you have one of those sprocket printers then it will print out a picture that's two by three I want to say and I think that would fit perfectly here. So this could be a little picture album. You could take this on the go and it could be if you have kids or grandkids or fur babies, it could be your little brag book. If you're using a dark enough Sharpie, <laughs> you could actually just write on the pages themselves. And again, I, I kind of like the versatility of this and it can be quite decorative this could also be the beginnings of a junk journal or a memory keeper and little and again you could do a whole bunch of these if you were to hold on I'll be right back so if you were to make these for a craft fair um, I have tons of cello bags I have I have tons of stuff but you could get one of these and this one is sized four by eight and a quarter this one does not have a sticky top but that doesn't matter and yes i do have a entire container of pens <laughs> so i'm gonna grab one of these And so if you package this, and again, if you're selling this at a craft fair, I definitely would not decorate the inside. That's for your customer to interpret on how they want to use it. But I would include a little pen. If you uh, find some of those uh, sticker sheets that you can get for like party favors that are in a theme, I think that would look really cute as well. I would not seal it all the way down, although you could, and that looks very professional. 
but what you can also do is just tape it down so that there is a little bit of a topper there. And then you can make a little top for it. I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. Just bend that in half. And if you are doing this for a craft fair, or bazaar, or ch a church thing, or, or whatever, then you could assembly line all of this. But you could put that on the top, and it actually doesn't matter, that's a little short. We just want a little bit of a, a, a decoration at the top. Staple that like that. And again, if you find, if you're making these in a theme and you have a bunch of stickers that have that, or if you have um, your branded stickers, you can put that. Um, let me just find a sticker to stick down. Because you don't have to hide the staple, but it looks cute if you do. Don't know that this will do it. Yeah, it definitely would be better if it were something more solid, but I, I think you get the idea. And I think this would make a, a cute little gift. As I've mentioned in several of these videos, if you are doing uh, craft fairs, I would make some that are just generic. Again, this pulls um, fall Thanksgiving for me, but it doesn't say it, so you could use this any time of year. Um, you would make some that are holiday specific, but not that many, but the rest would probably be something more generic so that it can be sold at any time of the year and it also can be used at any time of the year. This one I think is really cute. But this is my easy 6x6 notepad. I think it's really cute. You could um, put more papers together. It just makes it that much thicker and then that spine will need to be thicker to incorporate that. But I think it's a great way to use up your paper pad. If you're like me, you might have quite a few of these. <laughs> All right, guys, let me know what you think of this craft below. And as always, aloha.